Hi, I'm Josh Richards. I'm a hand, elbow, and shoulder uh, surgeon in Oakland, California. Today I'm going to talk to you about adult distal radius fractures. So the distal radius is this part of the radius bone. The radius is a forearm bone on your thumb side of your arm. Proximal radius would be up here towards the elbow. Uh, there are many varieties of distal radius fractures. It's super common in people over 50 years old. Uh, and if you're postmenopausal, it can be a little worse of an injury as your bone is a little less strong than the average person. So even though you might have normal bone quality for someone 65, it's still not as strong as someone 18 years old. So the bone tends to displace more when you're over 65 as your bone's not as strong. So the simple fall onto your outstretched hand, usually palm down, tends to break the bone and bend it backwards towards the palm, uh, towards the, sorry, towards the backside of the hand. Um, not all displace, some distal fractures, a small crack. Uh, if it's just a small crack and it really hasn't moved at all, honestly, typically don't need a cast. A brace is fine. Just try to avoid a lifting, pushing, pulling over two, three pounds. Uh, the worst thing you could do would be like yoga, downward dog, or a push-up. Um, most people wouldn't do that because it hurts, uh, but the basic idea, if it's not displaced, a brace is fine. Um, if it is displaced, well, uh, you might need surgery is the truth. Uh, oftentimes with dysteresis fractures, particularly if you're over 65, uh, even if you straighten them, the bone tends to want to drift back. So some people will end up in the emergency room, the ER doctor will straighten it, almost perfect, usually not perfect, but close. And then they come in and see us and we get a new x-ray to compare to the one in the emergency room and oftentimes it's already started to bend backwards to where you started. If it's still an acceptable range, which um, just to go over that quickly, uh, the bone typically bends towards the palm about 12 degrees in most people. So if you break it and it bends to straight, well, if it's straight, that means it changed 12 degrees. If it bends backwards 10 degrees, that means it's 22 degrees out of place. So 22 degrees is too much. Uh, unless you're 85, 90 plus, we're typically going to talk to you about straightening that. Often you need some metal to hold it there. So if you're 80 years old and you started off 30 degrees that way, as soon as we move you back, it's going to want to drift back typically, and a cast is not going to hold it. So what we use is some, a plate. Uh, this is a plate, a typical plate. It goes right on the palm side of the forearm. There's screws that hold the plate. Uh, obviously, uh, we need to make an incision to put this plate on. Incisions on the palm side of your forearm, a longitudinal incision. We move some muscle out of the way. We put the bone back to where it's supposed to be. Sometimes there's a lot of pieces that need to be fixed. So sometimes we not only use a plate on this side, but sometimes we even put a plate on the back side. But typically, it's on the palm side. Sometimes we don't use a plate, sometimes we just use some temporary wires that go through a poke hole in the skin. Um, but most of the time in adult fractures, we're typically using a plate, especially someone 50 or older. If you're 35 uh, and you have good strong bone and the break is outside of the joint, or call, we call that extra articular, meaning the joint surface is spared or fine, then you might just need straightened and then a cast will do it. Uh, or straighten it with pins and you might not need something like this. Uh, personally, I don't believe you need to fear this. Um, you know, some people think, well, permanent hardware, that sounds scary. Uh, typically, we use titanium plates, which don't go off in airports. Uh, it's rare they need to be removed, but it, sometimes. So the average is about, we tell people, 5% of people need it removed. Typically, that's because it irritates a tendon or a muscle. and so. Six to nine months later when you should be fine and not hurting at all, it just hurts a little bit. It's not terrible, but it hurts a little bit. And so then we might go back in and remove the plate and screws. Um, so most people keep it. Uh, it doesn't go off in hard uh, airports and it doesn't cause you any trouble systemically or in your whole body. You can think of it as kind of a lot of fillings. Um, as far as the bone typically heals in about six weeks. This bone has great blood supply, so getting it to heal is usually not a problem. It's more keeping it in a good position that's a problem. 
So uh, the goal of the hand surgeon is to get it back in a good, reasonable position, hopefully perfect. Uh, it doesn't always have to be absolutely perfect though. And, uh, if it's a few degrees off, like in neutral, as I mentioned before, which is about 12 degrees off of normal and it stays there, that typically is not going to have any long-term problems for anyone. So that, that's a, an acceptable range. Once it starts to tilt backwards more than that, like five degrees backwards or more, that's where we're talking about surgery typically or trying to get it back uh, to neutral or better. So in review, most fractures are minimally displaced, uh, depending on how displaced a cast or a brace. Typically, if it's displaced, or you need, you know, we're talking about locking you up for four to six weeks and then starting motion with therapy at some point as determined by the surgeon. Certainly by six weeks, it's typically totally reasonable to start therapy and, and motion uh, and start weight bearing as it's usually pretty well healed. Uh, it takes a while to return to sports, albeit the bones healed at six weeks in an adult. Usually you don't feel up for it for about 12. It's still a little sore and swollen, especially when you put a lot of weight on it, like a push-up. A push-up takes like nine to 12 months to feel really good. So if you're a yoga, a yoga addict or push-up addict, that's going to take a super long time. But normal activities, basketball, you know, weight, moderate weightlifting, by four or five months you feel pretty good. Uh, most people recover most of their, uh, almost all their motion with very minimal loss. Uh, most people recover all their strength, uh, don't really lose anything. And a lot of that has to do with getting it back to where it needs to be. Occasionally some problems that slow people down are some tendonitis issues. So if you have numbness or tingling, uh, you might have a little bit of carpal tunnel that might need to be treated. Uh, if you get some stiff fingers, that can be a very big problem. So of all the things that's most important to do is to get your fingers moving very quickly and aggressively. So I sit down with my patients and the thing I make them remember is that every hour that they're awake, uh, whether they had surgery or not, they get, take their fingers and they push them into their palm, count to 10, relax, push into the palm, count to 10, relax. That can be extremely painful in the beginning. It can be really rough, but it's, it's so important to get your fingers moving. So uh, of all the things you remember from this video, if, if anyone watches it, is get those fingers into your palm, okay, as quickly as possible. So if you're in a splint that the ER put on and it's out over your fingers, you need to get out of that, get in to see a hand surgeon and get them out of that so your fingers can uh, be free because they often do that in the ER and urgent care. Put a, a too big a splint on. It should be back here where you can make a fist, okay. Um, so in summary, it usually takes six weeks to heal. If it's significantly displaced, you might need surgery as determined by the surgeon. Uh, usually back to most activities by three months with the rare exception of like push-ups, yoga, could be six to nine or even longer. Thank you.